Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to talk about one pie to rule them all. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So you may be wondering if I've come up with some really cool new Raspberry Pi that's going to be just heads above everything else out there. Well, no. Sorry to disappoint you, but that is not the case. What I have decided on doing is using one Raspberry Pi to drive two or three different radios. So this video is going to be broken up into three parts. I'm going to explain to you guys first what drove me in this direction. I'm going to give you an example of how I'm using this. And then we're going to do a tutorial and show you how to get this running on your Raspberry Pi as well. So first things first, what drove me in this direction in wanting to use one Raspberry Pi for two or three different radios? Well, it's really twofold. First is right now, as of the uh, recording of this video, there is a major chip shortage worldwide, and that makes it extremely difficult to get your hands on a Raspberry Pi. The second thing that's driving this decision, well, if I'm really, really honest about it, I'm lazy. So here's the thing, I've always had a Raspberry Pi dedicated to one particular radio or radio kit. So if it was a Yezu 857, I had a Raspberry Pi for that specific radio. If it's the ICOM 705, I've got yet another Raspberry Pi for that particular radio. The problem with that comes in trying to keep all of those various systems up to date. Maybe I haven't used uh, one of my radios and one of my Raspberry Pis for the last several months. It's probably going to be out of date. It would be much nicer if we could have just one Raspberry Pi that could handle three or four different radios. It's going to make it a whole lot easier to keep that Raspberry Pi up to date. And it's going to free up some of those other Raspberry Pis for other jobs. Now, there are pies that I've got out there that are dedicated to doing one specific thing. Let's take my APRS Digipeter, for instance. That's always on and it is responsible for only one job. So that's not going to change. The Raspberry Pi that I'm referring to is the ones that I take out into the field for various activities, whether that's field day or parks on the air, whatever it happens to be. Uh, a lot of times, though, I'm using different radios. I may want to take out the 705 today. I may want to take out the 891 tomorrow. So I'm trying to narrow that down so that I've got one Raspberry Pi to deal with that can take care of all of those radios. So let me give you guys an idea of how this works. With the build a Pi system, as long as we're running rig control through FL Rig, there's very little else we need to reconfigure when we change radios. There is one exception to this, but for the, main, uh, for the most part, we only need to make one or two changes. So, uh, this is the Raspberry Pi that uh, I have built for my everyday carry kit. So, uh, from the last two videos, you guys will know that I use this with two different HTs and the possibility of two different radios, the ICOM 705 and the Yaesu 817. Depending on which radio I carried with me that time, I simply come up to the main Pi menu, I come down to ham radio, and I select the particular radio that I want to use. So in this case, you can see that I've pulled it up for the ICOM 705. But we can very simply just go in and change that the next time we go out, and maybe we want to use the 817 on this one. Now this one takes just a second longer to open because this is using Bluetooth cat control. But you can see right there that I now have the 817 running on FL rig, just like I did with the 705 a second ago. So once you've selected uh, which radio you want to use in FL rig, applications like WSJTX and JSA Call 
should follow suit if you've configured the radio in them to be FL rig. The only time this may make a difference to you is if one radio is using cat control for its PTT and another radio setup you have is using Vox for its PTT. And Vox would come into play if you're using a sound card, say like the Signalink. In that particular case, you might have to make a couple of changes in WSJTX or JSA call to change the way uh, the PTT is handled. The other thing you will want to do is inside of Pat Menu, I have gone in and tell you what, let me get back to the main screen here on this and let's go into the settings and config file. On this, I'm going to click load the config file. I have got three different configurations here depending on the radio that I'm using. So I've got one for the 705, I've got one for the 817, and then I've got another config that I have labeled MobiLink. So if I'm using either one of the HT radios, I would go ahead and load this configuration file before attempting to make a WinLink connection. So let's take a quick second to look at configuring or reconfiguring JSA call when you change radios before we get to how you're going to set this up on your Raspberry Pi. So I'm just going to come up to File and Settings. And the next thing I'm going to do is come over to the Radio tab. And right here, you'll see that I have FL Rig selected for my radio. And then the Cat Control options is what you might need to change from Cat to Vox. Uh, depending on your particular sound card. So we'll just run a quick test on the cat here and you see that it's green. I'll do a quick PTT test and that did key the radio. Now I'm going to shut this down and connect back to the 817 and we'll see how many changes I need to do inside of JSA Call to make it work again once I've changed radios. Now that the 817 is connected to the Raspberry Pi and I've got FL Rig up and running, we'll just go ahead and restart JSA Call. Then once we get into it, we'll go over and check our settings. We shouldn't have to mess with anything on rig control because it's the same setup. I'm using CAT for my PTT control and um, I'm running everything through FL Rig. The one question I would have here is the audio card. The 705 uses an internal audio card and the 817 uses an external audio card. So I'm just going to go over here under my audio tab and take a look at it. This one looks correct with the USB-C. Uh, the 817, I'm using uh, the Sombrant sound card with it, so this looks correct for that. But you will see right here that my output card is incorrect. So I would just simply open that up select the correct card and everything else should work. I don't have to worry about redoing my cat control because we're still feeding everything through FL Rig. So if I run the test cat, it should come back green and everything be okay. We can do a quick PTT test as well. The radio goes into transmit mode and we're good to go. That's it. That's how quick and easy it is to change from one radio to the next. So let's take about two minutes here, maybe three, and get you guys up and running with this as well. We're going to come over to github.com forward slash km4ack. Once you get to this page here, we're going to click on PyScripts. Once we're inside the PyScripts repository, we're going to scroll down. We're looking for something called FL Helper. And we're going to go ahead and click on FL Helper here and it will load up this page. Now, don't miss this next step here. If you do, it's not going to work correctly for you. You want to find this raw button right here and go ahead and click on the raw button. You shouldn't see anything but the text of the script now inside this window. We're going to come right up here to the address bar. We're going to highlight that, and I'm just going to press Control c on my keyboard to copy it. Now, let's go ahead and open up a terminal window on the Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to move over to the bin directory, so cd space bin. Now, this does assume that you're running a build a pi setup. Let's go ahead and press return that gets us into the bin directory. Once we're in the bin directory, let's run a wget command. 
and then paste in that link that we copied from the website just a second ago. We'll go ahead and press return to get that file downloaded. Should only take it a couple of seconds here. Once that's done, we want to make that file executable. So we're going to run chmod space plus x space fl helper. Go ahead and press return. Now I'm just going to clear that screen and run the ls command and you should see fl helper in green. Now we're going to go ahead and install the menu uh, shortcut so that we can get to this a little bit easier. So I'm going to run fl helper space install. Go ahead and press return and that'll tell you that it's been installed and a shortcut has been created under preferences in the main pie menu. So at this point we can close this. Let's go ahead and come up to our main pie menu, come down to preferences and you will see FL Rig Helper. And you will be presented with this dialog box here. So when you want to add a new rig, you would just simply press 1. It's going to ask you for the model number of your radio. I'm going to say 705, but I'm going to give it an A behind it just so I can differentiate it because I already have one 705 in the menu. But we're going to go ahead and redo the 705 radio. So name it here and press return. It's going to tell you that the new radio has been created. Press any key to continue and it takes you right back to the main menu. If you need to remove a rig, you can do that. If you need some help, choose option four. For now, I'm just going to quit out of this menu and we're going to come up to the main pie menu, come down to ham radio, and now you're going to see a new instance of FL Rig. So we got the original 705 that I had created, and we've got the new 705A that I've created. When you click on the new instance, you're going to get a transceiver not responding. At this point, you can go ahead and set up your radio for FL Rig. So I went ahead and put in the correct things in these boxes, and I'll go ahead and press initialize and you'll see that I am good to go with the second instance of the 705. Now, obviously, you would want two instances for the same radio, but one instance for each individual radio that you plan on using. So there's a brief look at how I plan to utilize the Raspberry Pis that I'm carrying into the field going forward. I'm going to just have one or two that I can use with every single radio that I own. This should make it much easier to keep the Raspberry Pi up to date, and it's going to free up several Raspberry Pis. If you found this video helpful, be sure to leave us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.